Hello. Well, the time has sadly come that Airstream UK want their Missouri back. I know they actually want it back because this is their journalist loan model and they didn't have any other loans for it in the winter. So we've enjoyed this caravan for six months and have towed it over 6,000 miles. So it's had a really good thorough test with Dougal and I. And I thought before we hand it back, I'll just quickly talk about some of the things that we've loved about it and some of the things that we've not really loved about it. So just to be clear, this is not a full on review. Um, a couple of years ago, I did actually do a 42 minute video showing you around this very caravan in a lot of detail. So if you want the nuts and bolts detail of, am I boring you? Sorry, Dougal. If you want the nuts and bolts detail about this caravan, please check out this video. I'll link it in the description below. And also I'll put a little card up here. And that's if you just want to have a really thorough look at that, at this caravan. This video is purely going to be what, how we've got on with living in it for six months. Because to be fair, if you want an Airstream, you're not too worried about the nuts and bolts and things like that, because the choice really, if you want an Airstream or you don't want an Airstream is basically, do you want one? Yes, no. It's not so much about the, the bits and pieces. If you do want an Airstream, at the moment in the UK, we have three models, the Colorado, the Yukon, and this one, the Missouri. The Missouri, this one is the smallest. Now, just so we don't forget our friends over in Germany, France, Belgium, and other countries outside of the UK, we'll also talk a little bit about these in the context of Airstream Europe. Now, the Missouri is sold in by Airstream Europe as the 534. The Yukon is sold as the 604, and the Colorado is sold as the 684. They're pretty much the same caravans, just with detailed differences like soft furnishings and one or two little bits or pieces. Now, since 2013, all Airstreams in the UK and in Europe were built fully in the United States. So all the furniture was fitted, everything was done, at Jackson Center in the United States. All that was done when they came to Europe was these, the soft furnishings were put in and gas safety checks, things like that. But generally they are built entirely in the United States. Before 2013, the shells used to arrive from the United States into a company in the UK who used to fit them out. So if it's a pre-2013 Airstream, they were fitted out by a third party in the UK. Since 2013 and all Airstream UK models, the Missouri, Yukon and Colorado, if you got those names, they were built entirely at the Airstream factory. So this one has been built entirely at Jackson Center in Ohio. So a lot of you know I have an Airstream myself. Mine is called a 532, which is the same size as this Missouri, but it's a two berth and washroom. It was built in 2011, so mine was fitted out in the UK. So it's been very interesting, what with a different layout and also with a different standard of interior finish comparing the two. So I'll talk about that along this little video as well. So we'll start off with the exterior and what I love about the exterior of this new Airstream UK Missouri is the fact that now Airstreams ride higher off the ground than the previous Airstreams that say I've got my 532. My 532 is very low to the ground. I keep bashing the mover. I keep grounding it. Whereas now they've addressed that issue and Airstreams ride quite a bit higher on the chassis and therefore make them eminently more towable. It does not affect the stability whatsoever. I have towed this caravan 6,000 miles. It has not put a foot wrong. These are honestly the best and the easiest caravans to tow because of their shape, because of the way the weight is distributed inside them, where the most of the weight in all models is over the axle. It means that they tow in impeccably and the added height that they now have makes no difference to that so that is a real thumbs up that's about the only difference to the exterior over 
say the Airstream I've got and obviously it's a Marmite exterior you either love it as I do or you hate it but that's personal choice. So coming now to the interior we're going to talk about what I love what I haven't loved and also obviously I've got to talk about breakages and failures there have been a couple we're starting off with what I love and what I love about this layout is the the light you've got this beautiful panoramic window at the front you've got another beautiful panoramic window at the back you've got two lovely roof lights the light floods in and what I find interesting now is that you'll notice that the the current trend with caravan design is to split them up into little rooms so even my end washroom 532 is in two rooms you've got a room at the front the living room and then you've got the washroom at the rear a lot of them now have a separate living accommodation washroom and bedroom they're sort of three rooms in a caravan this is one big room with the washroom at the side I like this I like being able to see all around me and I think a lot of people are now hemming themselves in I don't know if this is a, a cultural or a generational thing because there's a lot of you if you've been caravanning as long as I have back in the 70s nearly all the caravans were were one big room with windows either side you could see all around now it all seems to be closing in on you whereas this I love the space I love the space I love the light I love the feel of it it is a lovely lovely feel good space and I love that that is my favorite thing about this Missouri I couldn't talk about this caravan without talking about the Duvalet mattress oh my word you've probably seen a lot of videos online praising the Duvalet mattress and saying how wonderful it is well I have zero relationship with Duvalet I don't know them I just know I've just slept on one of their mattresses for six months and all I can say is it lives up to the hype it really is good it was it is brilliant and I have loved the mattress and I've enjoyed the fixed bed obviously and then the other thing I really love about this caravan is the kitchen it just works really well the Corian worked off it's just very well planned it's as if someone's thought about how you use a kitchen when they've put that together it's very simple and it works the Corian worktop is beautiful storage is great everything is just in the right place I've really enjoyed using the kitchen pretty similar to the kitchen I have in my 532 and it's pretty similar to any kitchen in any Airstream UK or European Airstream so the kitchen really really works right so now what have I not enjoyed about this caravan now what's interesting I thought the thing that I would dislike the most would be the washroom because it's an all-in-one wet room I'm delighted to say it's actually been really good it's been fine it's not worried me at all I've taken plenty of showers in there it works pretty well obviously not as good as a separate shower but it hasn't been what I would consider a downside it wouldn't put me off buying a caravan like this the one thing I would say is that I'm here on my own and I leave the towel outside when I'm showering and if you're sharing the caravan with people that you may not be uh, say intimate with um, that you wouldn't want them to see you naked then you would want them out the caravan before you took a shower whereas if you had a separate washroom with a separate shower you could have a fully private space that's about the only thing with the washroom I've not actually found it to be an issue whatsoever so that's been really good the main issue I have had with this caravan and again it's personal choice but it is this dinette I didn't think it would worry me but I've had friends for dinner over for dinner and as soon as you've got as soon as you've got more than two people at this dinette it gets really cramped because your, your legs have got nowhere to go the thing I have to say I dislike about it the most is this table it works very well as a table I love dining from it I work from it it's great but this big huge thick leg is just always in the way the table is always in the way and when you want to access these lockers or pull the curtains you'll find that the table is just in the way so that has been I don't know I, I, I feel that there could be a better way of doing this 
whether you could have um, a pop-up table or whether or not maybe you could just make this an L-shaped lounge with a freestanding free table here or maybe make it two short seats. Uh, get rid of this seat here with a chest and a fold-out drawer. So I just feel there could be a better way of doing this dinette area. Obviously there is always compromise in caravans and the compromise you're making with the Missouri is the fact that it's eminently towable, it's single axle, you can take it anywhere and you're going to have to make compromises and it's as I say it's fine for a couple but as soon as you've got a third person here it's not comfortable and this table I find gets in the way. The second thing I've not enjoyed about this caravan is using the space under the bed, the storage space under the bed. Because of the design of the caravan with the storage, it's not possible to have a lift up bed base. You have to go into the storage using the cupboard on the floor. Now, because I've been basically living in this caravan for six months, I've had to store quite a bit of stuff under the bed and it's been a faff getting it out. I can't put it any other way. Every time I want something that's stored under the bed, I need to get right down on the floor and open the cupboard and then pull things out. And it's just, it's got on my nerves more than once. Sometimes I even go outside and approach the underbed area from the back because you can approach it from outside. And that's been really useful, but I've just not found that area as useful as I would have hoped. But other than those two sort of minor issues, the, um, the table in the way and the scrambling round on the floor to get under the bed, there's been nothing else that I've really not enjoyed at all about this caravan. It's been absolutely brilliant. And yeah, I don't want to give it back by the way. Breakages and failures. Now there have been two breakages and failures. Um, one has been an Airstream issue, but you could also say 50% of that was user error. And that was, I have broken the blind. I managed to pull it out of its tracks and it's been hanging there ever since waiting to be repaired when the caravan goes back to Airstream UK. Now, my argument is that because of this table, I couldn't stand square to the blind to open it and close it. I was doing it at an awkward angle. The other argument is, well, that was my fault. I should have been more gentle with it. But I counter that argument with the fact I have a very similar blind in my own Airstream that I've had for eight years. I've had an Airstream for 10 years. I've never done that before. So I think that is six of one, half a dozen of the other, but I've managed to break the blind. You could say it was my ham-fistedness, but I, I partly blame the fact I couldn't stand square to the blind and maybe it was just a bit too stiff. So that was one of the two breakages and failures. The second breakage and failure we've had with this caravan over six months has been the water pump. The water pump packed up about four weeks ago. Obviously things like the water pump, the fridge, the cooker, all this kind of thing, they're all bought in. They're not Airstream products. So the water pump could go in any caravan. So I'm not too worried about the fact the water pump has packed up because if you've got a caravan, you've probably had the water pump pack up on you in the past or the micro switch in the tap or the fridge element or something like that. We all have bits and pieces that go wrong with our caravans. To me, that's just one of those things. It's unfortunate. But speaking of the water pump, it's reminded me of another little niggle that I don't particularly like. I prefer the arrangement of my Series 1 Airstream, but a lot of people do like it, so that's why they do it. In my Airstream, a pre-2013 Airstream, what we call a Series 1, I have two water pumps. That's four. Two water pumps. And th that means I can draw water directly from the outside tank, the aqua roll, or from the inside tank. Whereas this Airstream only has one water pump and it only draws water to the taps from the inboard tank, which means that if you want to use the water supply in the Airstream, you have to fill the inboard tank. And to do that, you need to put a submersible pump into the aqua roll or use a 
serviced pitch with a with a water hookup. So I think a lot of people who use these will obviously opt for a service pitch where you just let it go and it just keeps topping itself up. You don't have to worry about a thing. Whereas if you're using an aqua roll like me, or what I found even worse, if you're just stopping somewhere for one night, you have to fill the aqua roll. From the aqua roll, you have to fill the inboard tank. And then from the inboard tank, you fill the hot water tank if you're like me and you tow with your tanks empty. I found that a bit of a faff. So yeah, that's a personal choice. My personal choice is I prefer the two pump system of an earlier Airstream. However, that's also quite complex and I can see why they've done this. This is a far more simple way of doing it. You don't have a hundred cr uh, cranks and valves and things to operate. It's just one simple process which is fill the inboard tank and Bob's your uncle. So that's about it. I mean when you think about it there's a lot to love about the Missouri and not a lot not to like about the Missouri. As I say it's just the compromise lounge um, the washroom lack of privacy might be an issue for you and if you are like me and you like to take everything with you I find the storage under the bed isn't as it first seems it's probably better used for things like your waste master and stuff when you're towing or your camping chairs more than things that you would use like bags of hard drives or photography bags that you would want to access from the inside. Now what I'd really love to do is I'd really love to compare this with a Yukon because I think they're the two that most people would choose between a Missouri or a Yukon because a Colorado or a 684 is just what everyone wants but not all of us can have it if we haven't got the sufficient tow car. So I would love to try a Yukon and see how that differs in day-to-day -day use to a Missouri. So if Airstream UK is watching this, or Airstream Europe, I can try 604. I don't mind, really. It'd be lovely. Yeah, this is a beautiful, beautiful caravan. I really don't want to give it back, but needs must. And we are going on to borrow something else for the summer because I'm getting my Airstream back, or I'm going to go and pick it up in July. Uh, we're going to use it for a few weeks and then we're going to try again getting the refurb done and um, we've hopefully found a company now that's not going to let us down and do the little minor refurb that we're going to have done to it. So you'll have to stay tuned uh, to this channel to find out what vehicle we're going to have next. Um, I'm very excited about it. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, obviously there's not many people who are going to be choosing between a Missouri and a Yukon but or a 604 and a 534. But I hope you found that generally interesting about how we've got on with this fantastic, fantastic, wonderful Missouri over the past six months that I don't want to give back if I've not mentioned that already. But before we do, I think it's time I'm going to dive under the bed for one last time, get a little box out and maybe have one last little session before we give the caravan back. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you did, you know what to do. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you don't already. Please do also follow us on social media. And if you do, I'll put links to our Twitter and Instagram down there. And if you follow us on in social media, you'll find out as soon as we get our next vehicle what that's going to be. But from Dougal and from me, thanks for churning in. Are you sad about giving the Missouri back? Yeah, he's, he's sad about giving the Missouri back. In fact, you could say he never smiles. <laughs> <laughs>